Today's video, we're gonna talk about what the average cost per lead on Google Ads is and what you can expect from that. Here's how to determine what your cost per lead is basically gonna be starting out. Before, if, if you guys are, I obviously have some uh, other industry experts in here watching my videos on my channel. And if you're already saying, how are you going to know what the cost per lead is when you don't even know the market? That's exactly what I'm going to cover in today's video. Depending on what business category you're in, your, your cost per lead that you can get will basically change. And I'm going to give you the formula to figure it out depending on what business, uh, what, what business type you have, whether that be services, B2C, services B2B, or if you're selling products, whether that be B2B or B2C. And, uh, these are all based upon things that I have concluded and come have distilled this down to this basic set of formulas, having worked on hundreds and hundreds of ad accounts on Google in the last 20 years to give you this information. So whereas this is not completely, completely ironclad here, it's as about as it will it's as good as you're basically gonna get. And pretty darn accurate. Enough to where if you're just generally wondering what a, a lead running ads for your uh, Google ads account for your business is going to be. This is going to tell you what that ultimately is. So you don't go in totally blind because given we, you know, ultimately, yes, you could start up an ad account in 15 minutes on Google and start figuring out what your cost per lead is, but that's not what your true cost per lead is going to be because if you spend 15 minutes setting up your ads, your results are going to be dog shit and that's, you're gonna be paying way more than a cost per lead than what I'm gonna say you should be paying for a cost per lead. Not only that, by the way, it takes time to run your ads. The, the cost per lead that you're gonna pay day one is not gonna be the cost per lead you pay. You pay day 30, day 60, day 90, day 120, and on and on and on and on. So, this will give you some perspective of what you're gonna also pay once you've had the ads running for a respectable amount of time. To have any kind of even halfway decent results, you got to run your ads for 30 to 90 days because the ads just, no matter how good they are and no matter how good your landing page you're taking them to is, Google's algorithm has to get a read on what you have and they rank you against the, all the other people that are running ads in your market who want to show up for searches that you want to show up for and they treat you as if you're a loser right from the beginning because 90% of people who try Google Ads out for the first time are in and out within 90 days because they want results right away and they don't know how to set up an ad. So you have to earn your reputation with Google to get the better quality traffic, get a much lower cost per click, and as a result of that, your cost per conversion, cost per lead is not re gonna really be halfway respectable until you've at least ran your ads that far or that much, you know, like 30 to 90 days, if not a little longer. So anyway, with that said, I'm going to give you the formulas, like I said, and give you some, you know, different industries to go along with it. So you understand kind of how your business fits into, you know, the, the, the breadth of different companies that can run ads on Google ads and what the cost per lead that they're getting. So you understand what you should be getting in your own company and your own market. That said, getting into the content here. So first of all, I just want to say cost per lead will vary, again, based upon your bi uh, business category. Yes, you are going to fit into one of these three categories I mentioned here, but within that, you're also going to fit in within a different category, which is your niche business. And I gave some basic guide guidelines here, though, to understand which part of the general range that you're going to end up on based upon which niche you're actually in. So with that said, I'll get started with uh, you guys that are running service companies and selling to end consumers, whether that be home services, um, whether that be, uh, I mean, for the most part, that's what it is, right? It's home services. But if you were to do anything else, like massage services, whatever, this will give you a general idea of what to expect for your cost per lead, okay? All of these formulas, by the way, um, are based upon and figuring out what your cost per lead ought to be. The starting average cost per click that's tied to your market. So you can go into Google's keyword tool and type in a few of your keywords that you find that you expect customers to search for before you know clicking on your ad and calling you ultimately. 
If it's massage services, then obviously you type in a massage services as a keyword. And then of course what Google is gonna spit out is an average estimated cost per click high end and then also low end. Your cost per click that you're gonna be paying at the beginning day one is gonna be at that high end. If you run your ads so you have a higher click through rate, then your competition who's also bidding on that keyword and you get a higher conversion rate on the clicks you get to your landing page than your competition, also now showing up for and bidding on that same keyword, you'll pay the low end. So at the depending on if you wanna actually know what your cost per lead is gonna to be today versus running your ads for let's say 90 to 180 days already, that's up to you. So, but we'll say day one, you just look at the average, what they're saying your top end of the range cost per click is gonna be. You take that times a, uh, what your conversion rate is going to ought to be in terms of conversion rate from the click to phone call or contact form. That's what we're calling a lead. Okay, and that number you're gonna be, uh, have for your estimated conversion rate from click to lead is gonna be somewhere between two and 50%. Now, I know that's a one hell of a range, but the way that you determine which part of the range you're gonna end up on is simply this. The quicker the decision that a person can make, the bigger the conversion rate's gonna be. To give you an example from the towing industry, we'll get conversion rates 50, even 55, 60% sometimes. Why? Because if you're gonna go ahead and search towing services and get to the website, you're calling for, the, for all practical purposes. And that, that's why you can, you can get a conversion rate of 60%. So we took, in that particular instance where people make a decision right away or they don't basically, we take our average bid, high range, times 50%, and then that's gonna be our cost per lead. Pretty simple, huh? So, and then on the opposite in there, to give you an example, if we're talking about like custom cabinets, getting those installed in our house, that's not a decision when you actually make the, the search for custom cabinet services. Even if you type in custom cabinet contractors, you're still gonna be dragging your feet when you get to the site because you gotta be thinking, well, do they, do they have a good portfolio? You know, and then also it's like a you know, $30,000 job. So they gotta think about it for a while. They gotta talk to their wife, they gotta save up their money, whatever. You expect people to respond right away. The reality is they don't. So in that case, that would be the other end of the range and give you an example for that. So that is where you would take your average bid, high range, times 2%, and that's gonna be your cost per lead estimate for your market if you're in a market like that. And then obviously, you're probably gonna end up somewhere in between that, between two and 50 based upon them making a decision in a, re a respectable amount of time, but not always right away. To give you another example, if we're talking about um, like, like if suicide cleanup, where if somebody commits suicide, somebody's gotta go ahead and clean up all the mess. For something like that, we're gonna be getting like 15%, whereas they mostly are gonna make their mind up right away, but some of them are gonna delay. And then you could talk about, um, you know, like uh, medical services, anything that, like to do with medical services, you're usually talking about 15% there as well because you're usually gonna decide right away, but not always. So anyway, you get the general gist here of what I'm trying to say. That gives you the basic breakdown of how to know what your cost per lead is gonna be in, from Google Ads in your market when we're at least talking about search ads. Google ads can also obviously be YouTube ads, display ads, and I'm not gonna necessarily get into that because most of you guys watching this don't care about that. It's for more advanced advertisers who know how to make direct response ads and you know, you can watch my other videos about that if you're interested in that. But in short, display ads don't follow this rule because your conversion rate's gonna be so much different. In those types of situations, because the cost per click is gonna be less, you're already talking about, if you can get a 1% conversion rate, you're already doing good. But so anyway, this is for search ads and search ads only. Next, going into the services for, if you're selling to businesses, whether you're selling digitizing services or outsourced CFO services or sales training services, whatever. In this particular situation, you're gonna do the same thing as you did before with the services for individual consumers. You're gonna take the average cost per click as it shows for your main keywords that you type in into the Google keyword tool, and then times a conversion rate of seven to 15% to get your average cost per lead of what you're expecting that type of market. Why seven to 
It'll vary based upon the keyword itself, long tail versus short tail. So if you need to get every lead you can from Google search, you're gonna have a conversion rate closer to 7%. Why? Because you're gonna have to go after the short and the long tail. If you had a smaller budget, you could only go after the long tail and you're gonna have a conversion rate closer to 15%. To give you an example, uh, with that said, we have a, you know, a client that was doing website design services, okay? The conversion rate we're gonna get from golf course website design services, given that they've done those before, and we can send them to a dedicated landing page for that, conversion rates can be 15% automatically in that situation versus website design services where we can only get it like a 7% because it's not a long tail keyword and there's more competition around that keyword. So basically what happens is we got the right person that came to the site, but because there's a lot of other people that do that, they're gonna be more apt to checking around before they turn into a lead. Versus the golf course example, there might be only one company that really specializes in that. So they're more apt to right away respond in that particular situation. So that's why I put seven to 15% specifically on that one for serve anything to do with B2B related services. Now, going into the final category here, products. If you're trying to sell a product and you need to generate a lead, which a lot of people who sell products don't think about things like that. What you want to do with a product company is, and running Google ads, is you want to set up your website as if you only expect people to go through your cart and, and buy that way. What you really want them to do is get to your site, think that they want to buy through your shopping cart, but they get to a certain point where they have a question and then they're just going to call. Why? Because when you get them on the phone and you talk to them, they're going to be 10 times more likely to buy than if they never called. Okay. And, and the more expensive your product is, the more likely and more, should I say more important it is that they call you because in terms of monetizing what you have to pay to get that click in the first place, given how much more likely it is that they're going to buy once you talk to them. Okay. A lot of people want to start e-commerce businesses thinking it's going to be a passive income business. And it's not that because if everything could be on, done on your website without talking to anybody, then Amazon would kick your ass basically because that, you know, they already have that covered. E-commerce businesses that I see are successful, can answer the phone and they can be a product expert to the customer and consult them through the way through this, through a sale. Anyway, so with that said, a lot of the times you want them to just call or turn it, uh, fill out a form, not expecting them to go through the cart because that in itself, if that's, all, if that's all you had, you're not gonna monetize each click at a level high enough to make the cost of running the ads pay for itself. And you know the fact that the phone number's there adds credibility because I you know a lot of people, if they look for a phone number, they're gonna say, well, if I have a problem with this product, I can't return it because you know, I'm not gonna be able to call them afterwards and all this other stuff. There's all these other things. You've gotta be able to basically answer the phone if you're gonna do well. But if you can't answer the phone and do better answering the phone than your competitors, you can do really, really well and you can make millions at e-commerce, especially when you understand how to run the ads correctly and you follow the techniques I give you on this channel. But anyway, in that situation, for the rate in which you can get a person to go to your site and then call or fill out the form, that mainly depends on the price of your product, okay? The higher the product price, the less you can expect to call. Why? Because there's more of an element of them thinking that they have to think about calling before they actually call. If it's something that is of a higher price point, because a lot of people are just going to be thinking about it or tire kicking. If you're talking about a $50,000 item as a whole versus somebody that was looking into buying a $500 item. And so what you could expect is if you sell something for under $100, you should be able to get around 9%. And this all assumes that you know how to put together a website that converts and a landing page that converts. This won't apply if you don't have that. So don't come back here and, and chew my ass if you're not getting this. In fact, you can chew my ass and I'll tell you if your landing page is good enough. And I won't just do that to, to, to put you off. You know, I want you to have success. I want you to be able to watch what I'm sharing with you here and get results, you can come back and be a testimonial for our techniques. Uh, but 
you know, you have to understand conversion psychology to some minimum level and understand usability and stuff like that on your site because that's more important than the ads themselves. It's like 70% of the equation as to how much you actually make with Google ads. Anyway, if your product price is in check, you know, the features of that product are in check, your site, you know, is as good as your competitors. Product under 100 bucks, you should be able to get 9% of people, roughly speaking, to call or fill out the form and turn into a lead. If you're between price point of 100 to 200 dollars, you should be able to get around 8%, as according to the five websites that I audited prior to making this video and averaged it out. For two to three hundred dollar price point items, you're talking about seven percent conversion rates. Three to four hundred, around six percent conversion rates. Four to five hundred, you're talking about five percent conversion rates. Five hundred to a thousand dollars, four percent conversion rates, and anything over a thousand dollars in product cost, you're talking about a three percent conversion rate or less. But for the most part, it won't get much less than three percent, as far as what I found. Uh, all that you'll have when you're the difference between a thousand dollar item and a ten thousand dollar item the the rate in which you get from click to lead will still be about three percent in either one of those cases but the closing rate of your lead will go down because that's just how it is the higher the product price it is uh, higher the product price the harder it is to close them why because it's a bigger decision but a lot of the people that you end up getting as a lead proportional wise are just never going to buy from anybody because their tire you just get a higher percentage of tire kickers with items that cost more that's just how it is and how it works out so that anyway gives you a general idea if you take your average bid like i mentioned before take that times what your conversion rate is here now you'll know what your cost per lead is going to be to generate and if you're selling products and you were wondering what your cost per lead is you're already very smart and ahead of the game because that, like I said, is what you need to be thinking about to make money with Google Ads. How can I get them to call? Because if I can get them to call, I can get them to buy. Not just expecting my website to do everything, which if you have fucking amazing website design skills and copywriting skills, you could get a website good enough to convert to where if you never talk to anybody, you could still make the ads pay for themselves. But unless you're in the top like 1% of internet marketers, you're not gonna do it. It's ha way hard to do that and just starting out and reading a couple books ain't gonna do it. You've gotta have tried and failed many, many, many times just to learn what you need to learn to do it. For all practical purposes, it's not gonna work to make you money. You gotta answer the phone, and then what you can do through answering the phone if you want to is reinvest the money you make from that back into making your website better and better and better, and you'll know if your website's getting better because you'll actually get less calls. The better the website is, the less calls you'll actually get because the, the more credible the site looks, the more informative and useful the site is to the user, the less calls they're naturally gonna have. But you know, always they're gonna have some, but you could get it to where there's very, virtually no calls, as you'll notice, if you can do an amazing job with your website and the copywriting and the images and the videos and everything you can do there. Um, and the follow-up you can do with the remarketing ads and everything else. But anyway, you get the general gist of what I'm saying here. As a small side note here, or should I say a large one, the higher the product or service cost, the lower the closing rate is going to be, okay? So I know this video is about leads, so I thought I would bring that up as well. I mentioned that just a second ago. You know, the difference between a $1,000 and a $10,000 item is you'll get the same amount of leads, but the closing rate will be way substantially different for those two items that you're selling that are uh, $9,000 in price apart from each other. So, you know, for a $10,000 item, you may only get 10% of those to close. Whereas on a $1,000 item, you may be able to get um, like uh, two of those to close instead of one out of, so, so two out of 10 versus one out of 10. And obviously that makes a big, big difference when you know, your leads are gonna cost you what they're gonna cost you. Uh, respectively, at $10,000 item, more than likely the cost per click is gonna be higher, so your cost per lead is gonna be higher, and you're gonna have a lower closing rate on top of it. But it backs out because the profit you're gonna make on a $10,000 item is so much more. If you wanna know why the cost per click is so much different from one keyword to another, it all mainly is just about how much money is behind the sale of that product, product or service that's related to that keyword. The more money that's at stake, 
the more that cost per click is going to be. And going back to what I was saying before, there's the average cost per click that shows it on the Google keyword tool for high end and low end. You can pay the low end if you just put together a good landing page slash site that converts well and put, put together a good ad that when it's up against four other ads at the top of Google, it gets selected two or three or four times the rate as anybody else's ad because you're going to be paying that low end of the range and you're going to crush it because generally speaking, if you pay that low end of the range, there's no way you're not going to make a, a great amount of money. So if you want to know the one thing I could tell you that will always get Google ads to work, get it to where you, you can pay the low end of the range of the cost per click, which means you have a higher click through rate and a higher conversion rate than your competitors that are now advertising for your same keywords. And uh, if you do that, you basically make money every time. So it's just a matter of how can you do that. And that in itself is not hard to do. And I don't care if you're competing against Fortune 500 companies doing it because they also have not great setups either. Trust me on that. I've seen hundreds of campaigns from big Fortune 500 companies to <laughs> mom and pop. And realistically, what makes a good ad and a good landing page is just effort put in. And a person that puts the most effort in is just simply the hungriest, really, at the end of the day. Yes, there's some exceptions, but that pretty much is it. So if you just want it bad enough, you'll get it. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, respectively, you can pay way less than anybody else. There's usually, as a last closing thought here, just so that you know, I like to mention on my videos, if you see four ads at the top of Google for your keywords right now, Realistically, there's 10 people cycling in and out of those top four spots on average, typically. And with that, so you're really going up against 10 other people who are running Google ads that all want the same customers you want. And whether you get shown a majority of the time and at a cost per click that you can afford that is still profitable, all depends on you. Will you put the time and effort in to put together the right ads that gets the highest click through rate? And so you're at least in the top 20% of click through rate versus, uh, as opposed to those 10 other people advertising for your keywords? And can you be in the top 20% of conversion rates as compared to the other 10 people trying to advertise for your keywords? And if you are, you'll make a good amount of money. If not, you'll make little to nothing. And that's pretty much how Google set it up so that people try to actually make a better experience for their users on an ongoing basis. They want people that do a good job to get most of the money so they can afford to be there. And the people that don't, can't afford to be there anymore. So it's not just simply showing up, it's can you beat the competition or not? If you can, you'll make a pile of money. If you can't, you make nothing. And there's really not that much middle ground anymore on Google Ads. So with that said, though, I'll wrap it up with that. Hopefully that made sense. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate if you would give it a like and consider subscribing, as I have a ton of other content on this channel that'll tell you how to beat everybody at Google Ads, as I mentioned that you need to do a minute ago. And uh, it comes from somebody who's doing, been doing uh, Google Ads for 20 years. And basically with that, everything you need to know to beat your competition every time. Uh, and it comes from somebody who just does ad strategy all day long with the clients that we work with. So therefore, it's better, it's better information than the YouTubers that don't run ad agencies and aren't you know, in, the, in the thick of it running ad tests like we do on an ongoing basis, and I, I do as I work with every client directly at our firm doing the strategy itself. Uh, so you should subscribe to this information. It's the best information you're gonna find on YouTube. If you like the channel, you can find my blog at guaranteeppc.com blog, as well as find my written column that I have over at entrepreneur.com. Uh, as a side, if you have any questions about anything I covered here today, thought like you have a unique situation you wanted to ask about or just have an ad related question in general, you can leave me a comment below. I get back to every single person who leaves me a comment on this channel, usually within a couple days time. You can ask me any question you'd like about ads as I love to be able to give back to my viewers of this channel to help that are helping our channel grow. As a side, um, there, if you do want to work with Guaranteed PPC, our P a specialized PPC ad agency, you can do so. Uh, all we do is run online ads for clients and help them get more results and we guarantee results. And that is if, if we don't get you more sales results on your campaigns, on your same ad spend, when you're starting out, we don't charge any fees at all. And uh, there is no catch other than we got to know that we can get good results on your stuff. Therefore, we don't work with just any client. But if you want to see if we can work together, I'll offer you a free analysis on what you have, have running right now. And uh, we'll see if it's, it's, it is possible to work together. You can reach out to me to, for that analysis at guaranteedppc.com. As a side, if you want to be able to 
uh, not work with an agency, but get really good results in a, a much shorter period of time. We sell ad templates. If we've worked in an industry before, we'll sell the templates of the ads, landing, page, landing pages, campaigns, everything that worked in that market to people for a one-time fee. As long as you're not in geographic territory that competes with the current client we have or one that we've had in the past, you can use the same thing that worked in one market in your market. And you get all the same results we did with none of the work and basically none of the money to figure out what we had to figure out to learn how to get results in that market. So if you're interested in that, you should reach out. Of course you should be because you're certainly not going to get the results we did without spending the money we did to get there. Um, and then with that, these templates actually are so useful. We've got people starting side businesses up with them because after we've optimized a campaign for years in a market, you could just use that to start up a business in any other geography and sell those leads or you know whatever, run that business on the side, partner with somebody to do operations. We got several people have, that have done that so far. So if you're interested in that and want to know what campaigns we've got, mar uh, what markets we've got campaigns for, you can also ask. Um, if you just reach out to guaranteeppc.com, I'd be happy to tell you what we've worked in and how, what results we got in what markets. As a couple other things to quickly mention, if you are looking for a partner, a, a bona fide partner that uh, can get you more results, we partner with companies like yourselves. Uh, like your company, like the people that are watching this channel, in that we will partner with you, charge nothing for our marketing services in exchange for one to 10% of your sales revenue growth at your company. Uh, so, and then we're, it's a long-term partnership. We own part of your company and we get, you know, we only earn when you earn more money. If you're interested in working uh, with us in that kind of, uh, uh, on that kind of basis, you can reach out to us as well. Uh, basically, we've done this with several companies already, of which we can let you know how well they're doing, which they're doing extremely well. Every company we've partnered together like that, that we chose to partner with uh, in that kind of manner. So it's different than the normal monthly fees that we would charge for other normal clients that we have. And then finally, if you want to work with an agency on a monthly basis or more so less long term like that, we are looking for people. We are looking for volunteers who would allow us to work on your campaign for free in exchange for letting us publish whatever we do and learn about your campaigns on this channel. So basically running a, a case study in which we'll exchange what we normally charge thousands of dollars for in, our, in regards to our services, our PPC services, uh, for a case study and where we would not need to charge you our normal fees that we charge our other clients who we don't get the liberty of sharing exactly what we're doing with their campaigns on this channel. So if you're interested in that, you can also reach out to us as well at guaranteeppc.com. So those are a few different ways you could actually work with us, but I'll wrap it up with that. Hopefully you liked this video. It was a lot of use to you and I'll see you on the next video where we have another great strategy for you then. See you later.